Hello and welcome back to a new video here on the Ludwig Fusel channel. In the last C++ video we have talked about operator overloading or how we make our objects print with C out like they would be a native type in the language or how you would use the stream to just move your objects in or how to just use the function uh, operator here to uh, compute your data. Really we have done quite an amazing thing. We have added sugar to our programming language. Today we're going to talk about a, a less uh, interesting thing but it is also very important that it's a key concept of the language. It is a key concept that C doesn't have, which is completely new to you, and thus really important to understand and something that people don't get most of the time or don't get directly if they are new to the language. We're going to talk about exceptions. Now, um, exceptions are a special thing in C++. In Java, they are there as well, but in C++, they are a very special thing that can, if you get them wrong, really screw up your application and create memory leaks and create whatever. So exceptions are important to understand and it's important to flag your functions if they support exceptions or if they're not, or to at least be aware what exceptions are and why you might be afraid of them and why your code maybe is breaking even through you are not going to notice it especially if you're building on heavy libraries. If you're spinning on heavy libraries and you're overwriting like methods of the library, so later on you can like provide custom implementations for functions the library provides or libraries provide. And if you're writing an own implementation of these functions and you use like new or delete inside of your functions and then you are between of these new and delete do something with the library and the library fails, it might throw an exception and then a memory leak can happen. This is why you need to be aware of this. So let's get actually started by talking about what exceptions are and what their main goal is to solve. All right, so currently, as you can see, our um, main file is getting way, way, way more complicated. So I'm going to try to like collapse everything that we don't talk about and then walk you through simply. All right, what we have is a main function. The main function asks the user for two inputs, an X and a count. Then it uh, uses count and X to create V4 uh, function pre-cacher that are put it in the pre-cacher container pool, which is kind of like pooling them all together. Now, um, with all of these operations that work on these methods, we could have a potential point of failure. So for example, if we try to take our container and we're going to access the container at position 16 and we're going to call print on position 16. If I do this, run this, wait a few secs, enter my values, we are screwed again. Hello, we are screwed. What happens? Access violation reading location 0x All right, what has happened? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly what happens. I have used whatever I've used. I call print here on this, and this was looking bad. So really what's happened here is we tried to print at position 16. However, our container, the pre-cache container, only has eight positions possible. So only eight like spaces. We only have eight spaces in our array that we can access. And if we only have eight spaces, accessing like anything else is going to give us errors. In this case, the access violation. If you would do this like on a production system, the application would crash because uh, it would go into that violation and the application might potentially crash because we accessed memory out of range. And exceptions that we're going to talk about today are one way of solving such issues. Well, the most easiest way to kind of like solve this issue here in this case would be to change the add function, right? The add function currently, what it does, it is checking to give you that index, right? What you could do is you could do something like if index uh, gr bigger than or bigger equal eight, then set index to seven. This would be a solution. Oh, I didn't want to do this. There we go. This would be a solution. So you could just clamp the index to the maximum index possible. However, this is not a good solution. Let me tell this to you. This is not a good solution. It is never a good solution to just like clamp something to a value because this is not the way the class is meant to be used. What we really want to do here is we want to have a safeguard in here that checks if your access is out of the of the, out of the bounds, out of the normal bounds, and um, it gives you an error straight away. Now there are multiple ways of tackling these. There are debug assertions, runtime assertions, uh, and mainly exceptions. 
that try to solve that issue. We're going to take a look at exceptions because I personally like them because they are always going to be in there. They're also going to be in there if you are shipping your code. And if everything goes wrong, you're always going to get at least some information out of the application without a crashing and a potential chance to recover from it. Assertions are always like a final destination. If you are getting to, your, uh, to an assertion on debug, it's going to stop and the debugger jumps in on release. If you're really having like a, um, uh, runtime assertions, if you are uh, releasing using your application, application will just terminate. An assert that fails checking your condition will take down your whole applications. Exceptions are a more graceful way of doing this. Exceptions allow you to uh, check at a certain point and to kind of like see, all right, there has something gone wrong, but it also allows you to catch these exceptions. So really what happens if something goes wrong, you can catch this somewhere above in the code. So for example, if you're having something catched in main and uh, or having a an, an exception was being triggered like in a print function and you are catching this in your main, your main can after that still operate like it did previously. Especially if you're writing libraries with callbacks or web server or something like that, this is something really important. If you write a web server uh, and the web request, the code for the web request fails somewhere, it should never do an assert because the assert would take down the whole web server and everything would be off. In general, like all business applications should use exceptions. If you're getting into like this gaming area, um, Assertions are maybe not that good because assertions going to take away um, computation power or computations they take time to validate. If an exception is validated every time the function runs, the function gets slower. So it's more like a in gaming you probably might have, if you write a game engine, you might have just some, some debug assertions that are just there if you're debugging. So if you find random crashes of your application, you go into debug and you try to find them and the debug asserts might help you. However, even that is not maybe the, the case. I personally tend to use exceptions everywhere and if they if I run out of like speed or everything, you can always remove them, right? So more of the point, use exceptions, they have the most best thing in common and especially most people are probably going to write business application with C++ and even if you're doing your own game engine, exceptions are probably not an issue. This is more like really high end level optimization. So long story short, we're going to use exceptions to detect an invalid condition, for example, at this ad operator. Well, how are we going to do it? We're going to do it by first including something. We're going to include std accept, I think. Yeah, there it is. std accept is what we're going to include. And what std accept gives us, it gives us some, some exceptions that we can use. Actually, there is something called exception here as well, a header called exception. And the exception is actually building, or these exceptions that are defined here are building on this, this like basic, uh, the, 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 the basic exceptions that, can occur, but they provide you a a bit of a more useful interface for now. That is like the, the main idea. If you're creating a default exception, um, you need to, a default exception is not meant to be used. It's meant to be a base class for your exceptions. However, um, you want to actually always use these exceptions that you have in here. And if I scroll a bit through here, you can see that you have a runtime error. That's the exception that we are always looking for. You can see that the uh, runtime error is built upon a normal exception and the normal exception um, kind of like here is abusing that normal exception to uh, kind of like give you a few implementations for, for this one. And we have multiple of them, like an overflow error if something overflows. We have an underflow error if something underflows. A range error if we are accessing the wrong range. Um, and these are like the, the three main things that we're going to talk about. And the first one that we're going to take a look at is the range error. The range error is a runtime error and it's really just like a different name for it, but a bit different and the range error is something that we can use to indicate that we are out of this range. So really what we want to do is we want to check if index bigger equal eight or the index is smaller than zero. So we are out of range. And what we want to do is we now want to raise or throw that exception. In C++ it's called throw and with throw you can really throw everything. I could just throw a five. You could really throw up every class that you imagine or every value. You could even throw a string up and say like this would work but it's not really a good idea. We have the classes for that. And for that I'm just going to use this std uh, range error and the std range error it just gets a string in here and I'm going to say uh, function precacher 
Oh, no, not function precacher. Let's say precacher container uh, index out of range. So if we would now um, do these checkings here, let's actually make it put them in a new line. We should be able to check for this out of range error. Sadly, we need to do this for both of them. Um, there's later going to be a way how we can try to make this a bit easier and a bit more. Yeah, but but really. In this case, you need a bit of code duplication. I really don't like it, but it's it's required here in this case. I mean, this is like nearly the same function, but with different access modifiers. If you want to have both of them available, you need to write both, sadly. You can't just write one and kind of like flag it as being used in, in both scenarios. Or you could probably, but it would be too, uh, too, too hard for now. So really what I can do is I can guide the axis of this object up by using this exception. Now, what would happen if I run this? Let's run it and see what happens. Five and five. And you can see that we again break into here. However, we are breaking somewhere completely different. Previously, you can see that we broke when we tried to call print. Now we break if we are trying to access it. So you can see this would be the next line. So the next line would be the return statement. And you can see that we have an unhandled exception in simple CPP app.exe. We have a Microsoft CPP exception of STD range error at memory location, whatever. So you can actually see that um, there was an exception and um, you can also see what it is. You can see it is a range error. However, you cannot really see what the content is or what has really happened. Okay, you can see it because we break in here and you can take a look at the text here and you can see that the index ran out of range. Now, this is, this is total fine. You can do this like that, but the main issue here is that your application is not portable, right? If you would start this here in the console, we would get that one. Debug error. Abort has been called. So really what happens if you're trying to do this in a normal way, if you try to run the application normally, you can see it aborts and it terminates. And this is terminating like that because this exception is never handled. That, that is because it says exception unhandled. So if you are throwing an exception, you also need to handle it somewhere. If you don't handle it, it is as good as nothing. It's also gonna crash the application. So what you really need to do is you need to handle your exceptions. How do you handle your uh, exceptions? Well, you uh, write a try catch block. Now, um, normally what I would do here is I would write a second function. Normally I do something like, something called a save main. The save main function is a function that is guarded against exceptions. In save main, it is okay to have exceptions in here. Now, what I like to do to kind of like guard the save main is to write another main function that invokes this main into in a, in a safe manner. So what I like to do is I write to write my own main function here. I'm gonna mark this main as no except. We're gonna get to that, what it is. This basically just means that this function will never throw an exception. This one is not meant to throw an exception. If it throws, then it's not kind of like the idea of that function. And if you don't have this no except, it can throw, but it's a different thing. And what do you want to do here is, you want to implement now a call to that main. So really the idea here is to return save main. However, if I would do this, it would probably, if I compile this, maybe give us something. Um, yeah, save main must return a value. Of course, uh, I now need to return something because it's no longer called main. It might give us a hint. The compiler might yell at us and say that we have declared a function as no except, which throws an exception, which it is not doing currently because main actually is allowed to throw exceptions. There's this Microsoft handler, which is catching exceptions and terminating your applications. This is why it is not marked as no except. However, I always like to mark them as no except to kind of like indicate that I have guarded my main against throwing exceptions. However, we haven't done this yet. We are just calling to save main, so really there's no point in that here. Um, to to catch exceptions, you need to write a try catch block. Now try basically means I'm gonna try, no, I don't wanna compile this yet. Um, try basically means I try to execute code and I'm gonna catch if something goes wrong. Now, what can you catch? Well, you can catch really everything. You can catch an index. If you're throwing an int, you can catch it. You can take, uh, catch a reference to an int. So if an int is thrown, you're gonna get a reference to the just thrown int. But really, that's not the idea. What we are up for is we are up for the STD range error reference. And I always like to call this X for exception. Or even want to go for a const STD range error 
reference. So we have a reference, we don't get the original as a copy, and we have it const, so it's really just a view to that exception that has been thrown. Is it a good way of doing it? No, it's not, because we don't only want to uh, actually take a look at the range error. And if I take a look at the A range error, error, you can see again that this is a runtime error. And if I take a look at the runtime error, you can see that the runtime error is an exception. And if I uh, go to the exception, you can see that we are now uh, at the main exception class, which is like the most, that, that is basically the root of all exceptions. So every exception that is programmed properly will base on that exception class. And this is why you should always catch for exception. And since I am not a trustworthy guy, or I don't trust other guys, I always write another catch. You can actually catch as many times as you want. I could catch now for a, a const char pointer and say text. If somebody throws in a text, you're going to catch for that. However, what you can also do is you can catch for everything else that is left. Catch handlers are always going to be done from top to bottom. So it's first going to check if it's a uh, const CD exception. If it is, it's going to do that one. If not, it tries to parse everything down there. And what you can do is you can write the three dots in here. And the three dot is basically the, the deepest point that can fail. This is going to be triggered if there is no exception recognized. So if it's not an SCD exception, this catch is handled. And what I then just basically do is I uh, do an SCDC out and say exception occurred. And then I normally add the text for the exception. Oh, this is really fitting above here. So normally I do something like that. And actually this X has a function called what. And this function what is um, going to give you uh, the description of that exception. So really the dot what is the description. So that's what I personally like to do. And then down here I do something like Maybe uh, unknown exception or cured. And then I kind of like have some, some guards around it. And the only thing left to do is have a return value for that function. I'm just going to return minus one if that save main return didn't do anything. And now by basically having the safeguard that main, so safeguarding the save main is basically now making this code here all exception safe. And if something goes wrong here, that main is going to catch it and that main is going to report it. And if I execute the code now, you're going to see exception occurred. Pre-cacher container index out of range. So now what we actually get is we still get the exception occurred. You still can see that it has done that. The whole mechanism has detected it. However, what the exception has now done is it has traveled up the call stack until it was able to find a exception handler, which was the main. And then it executed that one here because it is a SCD exception, which can be used in a const referenced way to get out what the exception actually is. Uh, in this case, like the string. So really what happened is that as soon as we hit that exception, which was hit somewhere, I think, here. So really what's happened is that we have thrown the exception here. So what it has done is it walked the code up. So it basically walked uh, through my operator, uh, that one probably. It walked through that operator back up into my main and then from my safe main to the actual main until it like called the um, C out here. So really what happens is that this exception was triggered somewhere down in the code and it traveled up until it got handled. And now here's the most important thing about exceptions. When exceptions occur, there is something going to happen called stack unwinding. So actually everything that was already constructed is going to be getting destructed. So actually in the safe main, as the uh, exception occurred here, the destructor of the container is going to be called. The pre-cacher container destructor is going to be called, which is going to destruct the four objects that has been created here. So if you have an exception, it is not directly jumping out of your code. It is not jumping out and terminating your application. What really happens is that your stack, everything that you have on here, like the account, the things that are now stored into account, they are unwinded. So really what happens is that they are destroyed. They are destroyed and everything that might do a cleanup has the chance of doing it. And that's something really, really important. So really what's happening is a whole cleanup of memory, not a just straightaway exit. We are doing proper cleanup here, and that's important. And this is also important that you understand this. Now, what exceptions do is they are randomly aborting your application, right? You would have thought if you call that print that it somehow this SCD C out C and T would have been triggered. No, it has not, because the exception occurred here. And it did it clean up. It did its cleanup up to here. And that is uh, that everything is good. So that every memory that the precache container, or better to say the function precacher, have allocated, that this memory is being freed before we go out of that function. It's all tried to get this done.
However, there's one important drawback. If you are writing code like that, or let's do something like int pointer data equals new int 50 integers, 55 integers. And down here, you are doing a delete array uh, data like that. If you then later on down here do a delete, you must know that this piece of code is never reached. So you are leaking that memory. And this is why we in C++ never really love to deal with raw memory. We would rather have a class called, let's just call this mem for now, for memory, a class that kind of like in its constructor calls, uh, let's quickly do this like that, in pointer mp, and then it does mp equals new int, 55, and in its destructor, oh, wrong symbol, and in its destructor, it delete array mp. So really what you want to do in C++ is always have everything get safeguarded, because if you're dealing with raw memory, something can happen. If you really have a function that deals with raw memory, like the function fun, the function fun, uh, oh, now I'm back again on Python. Um, no, Python is not function. Who was the, func the, the function thing again? Was it JavaScript, whatever. Um, if you have your function fun and your function fun creates an in pointer, IP by calling a new int and deletes this somehow. No, delete array, IP like that. If you do this like that, if you're really using raw memory, you want to always mark your function as no except. Because this basically indicates that you are not going to throw an exception here. And if you know, try to do something like the I'm ever function, and the I'm ever function is going to throw a std, let's not, let's do the runtime error, an std runtime memory like I'm the evil one. Ha 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 If you throw something like that and you try to call the I'm evil here, the compiler is gonna yell at you. Or it should yell at you. Oh, maybe it just did not yell at you because we haven't used the function here. Maybe we need to use it until it yells at you. Well, let's get rid of these. Uh, maybe put them down in here. Let's just call function and the compiler should yell at you. Why does it not yell at me? Uh, maybe because it's not reached. I don't know what it is doing to protect me. Okay, it doesn't yell at you, but it still gives you a debug error, and the debug error is actually here. Uh, I don't know why it's not really. Normally it should give you while compiling. Normally I would expect to give me a warning during compiling. Uh, why didn't it do it? I am really, really sad that it doesn't do this. Let's do maybe a, a rebuild. Kind of then maybe catch that. I don't know what's really wrong with it, but um, normally it uh, should should yell at you. Because this is marked as non-accept that you are calling a function that is not marked as non-accept. And... Um, you, you basically saw what happened. Really, basically what happened is that we got this message back and it was not properly handled because basically if we mark a function as non-accept, it is going to miss all capabilities of uh, handling exceptions. And if it misses the uh, capabilities of handling exceptions, exceptions will, again, be never handled because it's never traveling up. So you kind of like see what's going on. Maybe they have changed something in C++ that it only generates like this runtime error box. But really the idea is that you don't do this. If you do this explicitly, you can actually do a non-accept false and actually tell it to explicitly mark this as not non-accept. So basically as I'm throwing exception, does that maybe trigger that error message? I don't know why I... Why it is not liking to, to yell at me, but the idea is you want, don't want to do this. You don't want to call a function that can throw exceptions from a non-accept block. And from a non-accept block, you should only call functions that are like marked as non-accept so that you know what's going on there, so that you know that your memory, your, your raw memory that you're dealing with is not corrupted. Um, 
but it's always better to write a safeguard for your for your functions. It's rather better that you're spending some time when you start developing a new project that you spend some time uh, of probably writing wrappers around um, maybe libraries, writing lab wrappers around operating system things. Microsoft has their really own way to like have local alloc and local free which is doing some stuff, write a proper wrap around that so that none of this memory is leaked and the application runs stable. Because especially if you're writing business applications, like a game, even through this sounds cruel, but a game really, the people are going to game for a few hours um, at maximum and then the game is going to be terminated. And if a game crashes, well, you have your autosave that is hopefully quite near to what the player has done and you hopefully don't corrupt save games. But if an application crashes there because of out of memory or stuff like that, it is not a big of a deal. But if you're doing a business application which runs on a server and should ideally run like maybe two years until somebody is here to maintain the application or one year until somebody is there to maintain an application, if you're doing like maintenance at one year's intervals where you shut down and update the server, then the application needs to run that time. Your application really needs to run a year. This is why people like to do like C Sharpie stuff because C Sharp really it has a garbage collector that it, it, it eats away. The, the, the memory leaks by, by itself, by design. But you can do the same thing with C++ as well. That's the whole idea. C++ doesn't have a garbage collector, but you can come up and implement your own one. Actually, works. Even you don't need a garbage collector. Actually, you can write smart objects that automatically, when the last reference to it gets destroyed, they automatically destroy them in line without you noticing, without GC legs and all that stuff. You can all do this. But the thing is that C++, it allowed that you need to write this all on your own because C++ is going to give you the minimal tools. It is going to give you the minimal. Non-exception handling provided by default, uh, nothing. It's going to give you the bare minimum tools that you need and you can then go on and modify it so that you like your syntax, that you like your application, that you like your behavior. And that's the whole idea here. Now, after that whole talking stuff, let's now actually make our application 100% safe and let's reconsider every function that we have written so that we can uh, bring it into a exception safe form. All right, let's start by the print operator. No, there's nothing to do. Pre-cache container, let's see, print, okay. I'm gonna go for the usage and I'm gonna print them. Okay, not something that we can do. We can actually mark this one as, oh, we can't mark this as non-accept because we don't know if, oper if this is non-accept. This is non-accept, no, it's not non-accept, so we don't wanna mark this one as non-accept. The append function, well, that is a different story. Actually, the append function, we have just taken a check and we have not appended if we, um, if we are doing something. So really what I want to do here is if um, usage bigger equals eight, I want to throw a std overflow exception now, overflow error, uh, called overflow error, okay. An overflow error and I'm going to say container overflown. So the container was overflown and this is called the pre-cache container and the pre-cache container it has overflown. Now the same thing would happen for this one as well. And then we take uh, that one out and that one there so that we have it here. The add functions have been already guarded by myself. The other one does not do that. Well, the size function is really just a very simple one. So this is actually a const non-accept because it's never gonna throw at any point. Um, the operators, they are just calling through, so they are okay. So now that one would be guarded 100% correct. Now let's take a look at our one. Um, well, we could guard this down with exceptions really deeply, but I'm going to think that I'm just going to consider the main things that I do. That one is not important, but compute. Uh, if values doesn't, uh, if values can be allocated, this is an indication where I might want to throw. I want to throw an STD uh, uh, runtime error, uh, function precacher, uh, new failed, so we were able to allocate new memory. Something that goes under the compute here. Uh, release is quite simple. Print um, is something that we should. Yeah, well, this might be okay if we are printing something with any without any values. We want to print nothing. That's actually okay. The uh, add here we have a to do check range. So let's actually do it. Um, if uh, no, so like that. If index bigger equal than my, I, I think it could just call this count. Yeah, count. Throw std. Uh, actually, we have an out of range. Where is it? Out of range. Uh, 
I don't know. Range error is okay. We don't need it out of range. Function precacher. Um, index out of range. We had that size function here, which can also be marked as non-accept because we're not going to throw here. And that's all good. Then the operators are just going to call through. Let's quickly take a look at the uh, constructor. I think we were allocating here as well. So let me maybe grab my that one here so that we can throw somewhere there as well. And we could say here function precacher copy. Uh, if we fail to allocate the other values, we're going to say alloc failed. No, I don't want to collapse everything. Same should not for move. It should not be there, but we should have an operator assignment. No, no, they are calling through to the other one. So that's actually good. We just needed to add it here. And now this class is completely guarded up. Now adding this code again will not change anything on our application. Our application will still perform the same, but we have now guarded our functions for proper access. So they have now, we have now a safe main that everything is invoked safe. If we have an error, it's a reported. So normally you might want to even do more error reporting, but that's something that we might go into the future. There is a hell more to tell, a lot of more to tell about exceptions. You can actually do amazing stuff with them. You can actually go on and uh, and and wrap them around again in in like macros and have automatically add the source code from where the exception was thrown the function the line number so that later on if you're on debugging and your customer sending your error logs with an exception in there you can easily see all right there was the exception it was done there okay so I need to take a look at into that and see what the issue is so that the client can send log files and you can see what's going on and really where the exception was caused because currently I wouldn't be able to see where malware this new operator failed if it was in a construct uh, if it was in a compute function or in the copy constructor so really um this is just the beginning here and you can go far with that well <laughs> there's actually one thing that i have missed to do i actually have not written a a function precacher um print operator but they they look the same so yeah, that's that's okay. Right, so that's all about today. We talked about exceptions, and you are now really ready to write your own fancy functional classes. There's actually nothing more that I can really tell you about it. Okay, a, a bit of that with like um, source code file management. That's something that we probably want to do. And yeah, but you can already start writing your classes. You have everything that you need to know. You just need to know a bit of um, usage for you. So you can need to come up with your own usages to write your own code. So. Yeah, that's amazing. So thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. And we're going to uh, see or hear whatever us in the next video. So have a nice day. See ya. Bye.